Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast with Phil Graham. We help you master Facebook ads and give you an unfair advantage over your competition. Are you ready? Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast, episode 327. Phil Graham here. I've got an amazing episode for you guys today. I'm going to be sharing my three-step Facebook abandoned opportunity retargeting ad formula. There are way too many people that are struggling with ads, struggling with marketing in general, and losing money. One of the best things that I think people can focus on when it comes to success with ads, success with marketing, is getting people's attention first and then leveraging that attention to further help them. Because much of the time, people won't just see an offer and immediately sign up or buy something. You need to get really good at leveraging their awareness and following up with things that can make a difference. And many people talk about general retargeting ads. Some people do abandoned cart ads, which is good. Those are all good things. But they don't realize that there could be a gold mine out there for advertisers when they re-engage in a really smart way, in a segmented specific way with the awareness that they have created at the top of the funnel, especially with their ads. And so I've got a three-step system that I created that I recommend you guys test because it's so powerful. And I'm going to share it with you guys today because it can be a game changer for some of you guys. I highly recommend you try this. So welcome to the show today, you guys. I am so glad you're here. And I want to share a quick 30-second story on why I'm glad you're here. I had a client come to me who had gone through, they literally counted 17 what they would now call, you know, Facebook and marketing fake gurus or scammers whatever you want to call them. At the time, they didn't realize that that's what they were doing, but they've gone through 17 of those types of people, whether it was taking their courses, getting coaching, or actually having them run their ads for them. And it was a horrible, miserable experience, a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted money, a lot of get rich quick stuff that of course didn't work because that's not reality. And when they came to me, we started getting them doing things the right way. And it changed everything. That's one of the reasons why I started this podcast over six years ago, because there's so much bad information out there from so many people. And so you want to be really careful. I really hope that you guys focus on things that can really help your business. And that's not get rich quick. That's not copy this one template and you're going to make a bazillion dollars that's not reality. But the great news is when you market and you do it in a smart way, amazing things can happen. And no, it may not happen in two seconds. That's normal for it to take a little bit of time. And of course, with any business and any situation, there's no guarantees when it comes to things. But if you avoid all those fake gurus, you avoid the scammers, you focus you can put yourself ahead of so many people. So that's why I'm here. That's one of the missions behind this podcast. So I'm excited to share some great content with you guys today. I'm glad you're here. By the way, if you want to get in touch, if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one coaching, or if you want somebody to run your ads for you, so you can do what you do best, feel free to go to my website. Let's connect. You can go to philgramdigital.com and we can do a short Zoom call and talk about it. Or you can DM me on Instagram at Philgram Digital. Also on threads, you could at me on threads either way. And I would love to connect with you. So I'm going to jump right in and share my three-step abandoned opportunity retargeting ad formula. So what am I talking about when I say abandoned opportunity? A lot of people know what abandoned cart means when somebody puts something in a cart, but they don't finish their order. They don't check out. That's pretty commonly known. But there's something that is a huge opportunity, which so many advertisers either don't realize or they don't effectively take advantage of. And that is that abandoned opportunity. 
So what is an abandoned opportunity? Anytime you run an ad, and it doesn't even have to be from an ad, you could also organically do something and then get people to your website. But usually it's going to be from ads because you can control that and you can scale that. Anytime you run an ad, you get somebody interested in what you have to offer and they go to your website or your store. It doesn't matter if you're e-commerce or selling digital products or a local business. They go to your site and there's something they can do on that site. There is some kind of an offer. They can either buy something on that page or they can schedule a call with you, sign up for a webinar or give you their email for some kind of a lead magnet. For any of those things, when you get people there, and there's lots of people you can get there for a pretty small price when it comes to ads. When you get people there and they don't take the action that you want them to take, they don't buy something, they don't give you their email, they don't sign up for that webinar or whatever the case may be, that is an abandoned opportunity. And when you get back in front of those people, especially pretty quickly, and strategically, there is a ton of opportunity in doing that. And we've got a very special, specific way we do it. Again, it's three steps. I'm going to teach you exactly how we do it right now. So step number one is we create a separate audience for every offer that we have on the website that has a call to action to either buy something or sign up for something or schedule a call. Whenever there's a call to action, like I said earlier, it could be a webinar sign up, a lead magnet, it could be for scheduling a call, or it could literally be for buying a product or service. Wherever there is a specific call to action, could be a sales page, landing page, etc. Now, if you have a e-commerce store, let's say you have a lot of different products, then I would use category pages for that since you don't want to do like a hundred different things, but assuming you have like a handful, you have two, three, four, five categories or offers. If you're selling digital courses, products, or services, you might have two or three. But what you want to do is you want to create a separate audience out of each one. So as an example, let's say you had an offer for an opt-in for a lead magnet where somebody could download something. And then you had a different offer elsewhere on the website where they could schedule a call. And then you had a third offer where they could actually buy something. I would create an audience for each one of those three things. In Ads Manager, you can go in there, create audiences based off of specific pages people visited. And then when they don't take the action, you should know because Wherever the thank you page is on the action they take, whether that's a purchase or a sign up, your pixel should be on that thank you page. And then you can exclude the thank you page so that you don't accidentally advertise to people that actually did do what you wanted them to do. You just want to get the people that came there and left. So step one is setting up those different audiences, one individual audience for each separate offer that you have on your website. And if you have multiple pages that have the same offer on them, you can include all of those URLs. You can set up your audiences based off of which URLs have the offer and include the people that visited those specific pages just with each individual offer and then exclude the ones that did actually take the offer. So that's step one. Step two now is for each abandoned opportunity audience, I would launch two different ads. So the first ad would be taking the audience. Let's just take one as an example. Let's say you have a course that you sell and you have a funnel that sends people to a purchase page where they can buy the course. And so let's say they went there, they did not buy. I would create an audience like I did in step one of those people, but I would shorten the time frame in this one. So I would say they visited the page within the last one to seven days. So that way you're going to get people that are fresh, people that have literally been there only in the last week, one to seven days, who did not buy. And then I would send them an ad 
almost like they abandoned a cart, even though they didn't put something in a cart, they did visit your page and they didn't take the action you wanted them to take right away. By the way, my friends, this is completely normal. Many people, in fact, most people won't just automatically see an ad or see anything, whether it's an ad or not, and just go to a page and just make an immediate purchase or opt in without thinking about it or without having to come back. It's normal that you have to get back in front of them a few times. A lot of people think that they shouldn't have to. That's human behavior. It's definitely normal. So being able to get back in front of them in a short time frame is huge because the fact that they did not sign up or buy the first time does not mean that they were not interested. They may be ready to buy. They might just want to make sure you're credible. Or maybe they were multitasking, didn't have time. There's a lot of reasons why they don't buy the first time they see things or they don't sign up. So when you get back in front of them in a short time span, one, two, three, four days later, you're still going to be fresh in their memory. And that's a great opportunity to convert more of those people into leads or customers or clients. So in this step two, for each offer, one of the two ads is going to be taking those audiences you created. And for each one, doing an audience that has just in the last one to seven days. So you're cutting it down from overall to just the last one to seven days only. And then in regards to the ad copy for that, I would definitely talk about, hey, don't miss out. You want to resell the value of whatever got them there in the first place. And you could also add a sense of urgency if it's real. If not, then don't do it. But if there is a real sense of urgency for a price that is ending or maybe a date that's coming up or whatever the case may be, you could add that in there as well. You could also, don't forget, give some value even in this scenario too. So that's one of the two ads for each offer. The other one would be the same audiences, but instead of the people that visited just in the last one to seven days, you can go all the way out to six months because there's going to be people that visited two, three, four months ago that are still a great opportunity, a great potential customer or client for you. It's still an abandoned opportunity and there's still a good chance they're going to remember you. I mean, three, four months ago was not that long ago, especially if you have good branding and good content. So you would do the same thing except in a six month time frame. Now, the reason we're not just doing just the six month time frame is because we want to separate out the people that have most recently visited, the people that have been there in the last week. And we want to make sure that they see something as quickly as possible. If they're in that six month audience, if you've got a lot of them, the people that have recently visited may not see it again for a while. So that's why we do two different ones. For the six month audience ad for this abandoned opportunity, I would word the ad copy a little bit different. I would treat it more like it's semi warm, but not as warm as somebody that was just there a few days ago. And I would give a little bit more value there first and then go with the call to action, but it would be very similar to the content of the first ad. This is very important for both of these ads. You would match the ad copy to the exact product or service and offer that they were presented with originally. So if you had a webinar signup page, if that was the offer and they went there and they didn't sign up for the webinar in this follow-up ad, especially the one to seven day audience where they were just there a couple of days ago, you're going to talk more about why they should join the webinar. It needs to be very specific to that exact same offer or product or service. This is very different than just general broad retargeting because it's specific to what they engaged with recently. And that's where so much of the power of this comes in. So for each offer, for each product or opportunity, I would launch those two ads for each one. So if you have a sales offer, a webinar offer, and a lead magnet offer, that literally could be six ads because you would have the one to seven day audience for that. And then the six month audience for each one. So that's two different audiences and ads for each one of those offers that you have. Hopefully this makes sense. If not, maybe go back and listen to it again 
Once you get it, it becomes so powerful and so amazing. But again, make sure you're retargeting and matching the copy to the product, to the service, to the offer that they were engaged with and interested in, in the first place. Don't do a bait and switch. And then lastly, step three, this is going to be a little bit more advanced. Also, it's going to take more budget. So not everybody has to do this, but if you've got the budget for it, or if you want to just do it over time, as time goes by, I would add in some additional segmented pain points or opportunity copy. So here's what I mean on that. For each of the offers that you have, let's say you've got, again, I'll just go back to webinars. I'm just giving general example examples, but let's say you've got a webinar offer. I would identify the top two or three reasons why somebody would want to attend the webinar. And I would also identify the top two or three pain points or problems that you help them solve on the webinar. Let's say three, okay? And then for each of the three pain points and problems that you help them solve, I would do a separate ad to the smaller group, the people that were just on the webinar page within the last one to seven days. I would do three different ads, one for each of the three pain points or problems you help them solve. And the reason that I would do it separately and not just talk about all three in one, I would do that too, but I would do it separately so I can see if there's one pain point or problem that is working way better than all the others, because then we can scale that like crazy. So that's really important. That will take this to another level. You can measure which pain point or opportunity resonates best with which people. And then when you know that, you can give them more of what they want. And then your chances for success go way up. So in general, overall, with your ad copy and stuff, you want to make it seamless to the offer they were interested in in the first place. You want to segment your copy to the product, service, pain point, and offer. You also want to measure the data after doing this and while you're doing it, and then adapt and adjust what you're doing based off of what the data is telling you. That is so important. And then don't forget, also in your ad copy, Make sure you've got differentiation in there so you don't just look like everybody else and make sure you've got good hooks. That's your headline, what you say in your ad copy and your thumbnail or image that you use. If you can't hook them, if you can't get their attention, doesn't matter what you say, it's not gonna work. So make sure you've got good hooks. So I hope this is helpful because for us, it is insanely powerful. I highly recommend you guys put this into action. Please don't just listen and not do it or think, oh, that sounds cool. I really want you guys to try this. It's so powerful. So there we go. Episode 327 is in the books. I've got a lot of great stuff coming up for you guys. Again, if you want to get in touch, philgramdigital.com is the website, or you can DM me on Instagram at philgramdigital. And I will talk to you guys on next week's episode. Peace out. Thanks for listening to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast. Please remember to subscribe and share this with all your friends. For show notes, more tips, and to learn more about Phil, please visit philgramdigital.com slash podcast.